thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like um, air double. You're like, what the heck is all? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh. oh, oh, we are live, ladies and gentlemen. What is up? It is the Daily Hi Fi Podcast. We've got my man Michael, the youth man. We've got Stunna Joe from Joe and Tell. Oh, What's up, guys? How's it going, man? Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Joe's on the party boat back there. What's happening? Right now. Yeah, I had to get away from the other area because like they were playing music, so I figured I didn't want to get it kicked off. You look good, man. You look good. You're styling. Thank you. Thank you. Gotta go yeah, he is. Mexican. He is. Hey, you trying to check it out. Casino area right here. Casino area. Oh, uh -huh. look out. They got yeah, craps. Right they got the dice <laughs> game. These cards over here. They have cards. They have cards for craps. I don't like. I don't like that idea. Little little blackjack yeah. for. Uh, <laughs> oh man! All right. So, uh, Mike, what's going on? What's new? Oh man, I'm busting my butt, dude. Busting my butt, man. Just having fun. Literally having fun. Had a uh, last week. Hate to miss you, uh, the podcast, but had a chance to just spend some time with the family. They had the day off, so that was super cool, man. Yep. Yeah, man, just cranking out more videos. Um, got some new stuff coming in for review and uh, working on some websites for clients, man. So yeah, it's been super crazy busy. That's awesome, man. It's awesome. It's always, it's always good to stay busy for sure. We got 24 people in the house. What's up, everybody? Regular What's guy. What's going on, man? Regular guy. Is this awesome today? Just now? Yep. Yeah. Matt Buckmaster. What's up? Pero. I don't really want Dwayne's to. Dwayne's in the house. <laughs> what about you, Joe? We clearly know you're not at home. What What's going on with you? Oh, I'm just right here on a on a cruise. You know what I mean? I know that sounds scary right now, but uh, I'm not worried about nothing. I ain't worried about uh -oh. nothing. What um, you, what yeah, you, so about? we just went to, to Catalina. Huh? Now, where's Catalina? It's an island, uh, like Catalina is like a little like island, LA. Yeah, okay. It's, nice. um, as uh, one of my best friends is a pilot, he says that's the hardest place to land. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because there's all these uh, little mountains and mm. there's all these crosswinds, so mm. very hard to land. Another interesting note about Catalina since I used to work at the Vons here, this mm. is a tier one Vons here in Mammoth, which means it's the highest price. The only other tier one Vons price wise in the country is Catalina Island because everything has to be shipped in, sure. just like in Mammoth. So, yeah. like, you go there, I bet you you'll see an orange bell pepper for like four bucks because that's, that's that's what it's like here, and it sucks. Only anyway. Catalina we have is like salad I got... dressing. <laughs> I think I have a huge delay here, so if I answer at a weird time, please forgive me. Just like I, I think, like you know, the internet's pretty bad here. You know, you're supposed to order the internet here on the on the cruise ship. And yeah. uh, pro tip for anybody else who travels a lot, get one of these like travel routers, right? One of these travel routers, because you know, it's like you're in a hotel. Sometimes they charge you fifty bucks and give you like, you know, one connection. But of course, one connection just through your phone. How about the how about your wife? How about how about the kids? How about everybody else? How about your laptop? So this it thinks it thinks it's that everything's slick. connected. But I got everybody. Ah, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, nice. sneaky. I mean, that's Share. that's not the purpose. The purpose. Is so you're on the private internet. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now he's got four people sharing, you know, three hundred kilobits of bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. So, it's all good, it's man. It's all good. So you guys, uh, I've been uh, actually messing around with this blue sound node 2i that i won at ces got a video coming out tomorrow hopefully and i gotta tell you guys i like this thing this nice. thing is pretty awesome what? i'm not really too into like music streamers and all that but this one is different because if you have a title hi-fi account you get mm -hmm. access to the mqa files which are the master quality right and this thing decodes that so it's got a dac powerful oh enough to so decode that. unwrapper right Right. So instead of like normally you have to plug in your computer to your sound system so that your computer can decode the MQA and then play it mm -hmm. um, like it's got a pretty high quality deck in there. So it's pretty sweet. And then you can right. do all whole home thing. And, you know, um, it's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. I like it. 
Home theater man's in the house. What's up? Um, should we jump into our questions of the yeah, day? It looks like you already got Do a super it. chat. Mr. Rob is in the house as Rob always, e. showing up, the love, Rob? sharing What's the love. What's up, Rob? Man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, thank Joe, you. can you order me some Remy XO? Oh, I know what you're saying. <laughs> got you. <laughs> He'll hook you up, Rob. <laughs> hook you up, man. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, I'm actually going to a Jameson event after this, which is going to be fun. There you go. Yeah, no, nothing I'm, for you, I'm, Mike. I'm celebrating with the Celsius sparkling water here. <laughs> that's that's, that's some, dangerous that's stuff some, right there. Dude, that's potent stuff, man. Look, healthy energy accelerates metabolism and burns uh, body fat. So I figure while we're here for an hour and a half, he I drink this, I'm going to burn some calories. He's going to lose some fat. By hey. on, the, on the live stream, you might you might rip off his shirt right now. You might rip <laughs> off his shirt. You better watch out. Here we go. Watch out! Oh. Watch out! Watch out, Gene. <laughs> Gene's, Gene's, Gene's gonna have uh, some competition on the tightest shirt yeah. on no YouTube. Doubt. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Gene, man, he's got uh he's working on his new house. I saw he broke. I don't know if they, they broke, broke ground, ground. Or, or they bought the lot or they got yeah they got some, that. something like that. So. Oh, yeah, I wonder what kind of custom home theater he's going to do, man. It's going to be crazy, man. So the good thing is he's close to me, semi-close, probably about an hour drive. So um, definitely, you know, as he's building it or once it gets built, you know, I'll head over there, maybe do a, another updated tour of his setup. Yeah. It'll be pretty slick. He's got a lot of different components he's putting in there and pretty much probably just a brand new system, you know, from the ground up. He's got a lot of sponsors that are kind of backing him. So that's pretty awesome, man. So it should be should be pretty cool i mean like i i know i've told you guys um mike and joe but uh you guys out there don't know like i i want i would want to make like a bunch of different areas i'm gonna have a living room 5.1.4 slash 10.1 oro setup i want to have a side area it's got a yeah. two channel and then in the garage have like an actual theater room like that's yeah. that's what i want to do like three separate yeah. situations it'll happen man have the it'll sickest happen. outdoor speaker setup. Yeah. For sure, because you know I'll be rocking some parties with like a little DJ booth off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> you have to those speakers too. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Nice. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, so let's get into some questions. Let's start off with Joe's question: How does room acoustics and speaker placement affect the sound? Mm. What do you guys think? Let us all know right. in the comments. Of course, we're going to chat about that. Go ahead, Joe. All right, so we all know that, of course, the room makes a big difference. We always talk about that. Um, in some of the recent videos that I've been doing, I've actually been just using my my U-Mic 1 with REW and just measuring mm -hmm. to see actually what's going on in my room. So uh, keep that in mind that it's my room, not your room, but just to sure. give you an idea. And so, you know, of course, like I'm testing it with the speaker really close to the corner because that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, we all know... That's probably not the best place, but why? Why is that not a good place? And, uh, you know, near any wall, why is that not the optimal place? And what I've been finding out is placing a speaker near a wall is just, it, it enhances the bass too much. Sometimes it's useful if you have a speaker with like some weak bass. Sure. But if you have a decent speaker, you might get bloated bass, like more bass than you want, right? There's, there are, is such thing as too much of a good thing. And that's mm -hmm. what tends to happen if you have it near a corner, near a wall. Um, you know, and the other thing that I found that was interesting, I'm doing another video where I'm moving my listening position. And the same exact thing happens when you move your listening position. So if I go and sit in the corner, bass is going to go mm -hmm. way up. Right. Yeah. And so it's kind of interesting that it's interchangeable where you place a speaker and where the listener is. That's all interchangeable. Um, yeah. Usually, uh, the bass is what is affected most when you have it near corners. Oh, there's Ron. Um, and uh, what I've also noticed is the angle, like so the speaker, not necessarily the placement, but how you uh, how you angle the speaker in or out, right? Towing in or out or raising mm -hmm. it up or down based on the height of your sure. stance will affect the right. treble response. So that's in my next video. Nice. Gotcha. All good points there. Good points. Good points. As, as you guys know, um, I am all about um putting up some foam to uh handle reflections i can't do that so much in my you know uh living room but here in the studio you can see that one bass trap in the corner right there i got more up in the ceiling more behind more to the sides um but um 
But yeah, I'm totally about about room acoustics. And I know our boy Ron here. Welcome, Ron. What's hello, up, Ron? Hello. How are you, sir? Okay. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thank you. What do you think about room acoustics and how it affects the sound? Well, before we do that, when did Pitbull join Daily Hi-Fi? <laughs> He's looking fresh, man. Looking fresh. He is looking fresh, man. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Boy, yeah, no, I, I just caught the tail end of what Joey was saying, and that's been my exact um, experience as well. And so, yeah, I mean, when it comes to room acoustics and treating the room, it's a really big deal and uh, super, super important for sure. But why uh, specifically? We were just trying to say, like, what, what affects specifically? Because we always say, yeah, it makes a difference, right? But, like, yeah, what changes, right? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess it, it comes down to the type of treatment that we're talking about. Um, and it and it depends on what kind of problems that you have in the room. So, you know, in, in some rooms you're going to have, you know, hard reflections. Like here in Arizona, we have a lot of tile. We have nothing but hard reflections. And so you really want to try to tackle that with absorption. And so that's going to deal with, like you guys were saying, echoes in the room, but also base that likes to hang out in corners and things like that so that's that's a big deal and when it comes to um diffusion that's going to break up and scatter sound and so the end result of that is a lot of a lot of times you can make your room sound larger than what it actually is so you, if you have a smaller or medium room working with diffusion can actually give the audible illusion that it's actually larger than what it is which is pretty cool Nice, nice, nice. Look so what's up with those those base traps that you have there? there uh, just sorry to interrupt, but yeah. those base traps that you have there, I've noticed like there are people that use like they look like foam, like the kind of like the foam that you that you see a lot of people use on their walls. I've seen those yeah. types, but then I've seen like some huge looking like they look heavy almost type yeah. of base traps of like more dense material. I would imagine that that would do a better job just just by the how they look. I don't know. Exactly. I mean, yeah. If, if you really wanted to go the cheap route, all you need to do is put something there. Literally, yeah, something. if you had just a bunch of empty boxes yeah. <laughs> lining up from your floor to your ceiling, I know that doesn't look appealing, but I mean, you could do that and you'd get away from having that base collect. You literally just have to have something there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to, to what Joey was saying, you know, I mean, foam is kind of a mixed bag from what I've seen. Some people would say that it depends on the type of foam. And I don't know if that has to do with open cell versus closed cell, or if there are certain types of foam that lend itself better for acoustic properties. I think that that's probably true. I don't think that you can just buy any old foam, slap it on there and have the same results as foam that is actually designed for acoustic treatment. But um, kind of going along with what Joey was saying or what he was hinting at is foam can only by nature, depending on how thick it is, do so much. It can only absorb so many frequencies and it would be higher frequencies. Where <laughs> you get a foam that thick, man. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So okay, like, hold on a second. So, so how much did your base cost? And how much did that cost? Yeah. yeah. So my, my, so for four of those tri traps that I have in my corners, I want to say it's around eight hundred bucks. Wow, eight hundred bucks, China. Did you spend yeah. eight hundred bucks on those? Um, no, I spent. Um, well, I got a full room kit that was like around eighteen hundred. Um, which oh, which so those with were part eight. of it. Yeah, these were part of it, and this came, and this is uh, one of eight. So I got Ch eight of these. Chana, is that Orlex? Is that yes, all Orlex? Orlex stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so like that oh, foam okay. is not the same foam that you buy from like Foam Direct. It's actually yeah, gotcha. designed for acoustic properties. The and denser, so, maybe? Probably. It's pretty stiff. That's legit. That's legit. Pretty, yeah. Pretty stiff. Yeah. Interesting. I thought you were going mean, to say this... you spent like 35 bucks. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but... I, I, got, I got a good deal on it. Um, but I had some coupons and stuff, and I got it from Sweetwater, which is, it's, I mean, this is all for, um, you know, music studios, not necessarily for, um, home theaters but sure. i think what some people need to do is um just um know that especially in a home theater environment you don't want to like you don't want to completely dead correct you don't want to completely dead so don't go out like this 
I have the two inch foam all around here. Some people put four inch foam like pyramids all around and that really kills the the reflections and stuff. And that could actually be a detriment to your system than than improvement. So, you know, be careful. Don't just go hog wild. It, I, yeah. it looks cool. I know. I'm I'm you know, coming but, in. I'm I'm actually really excited. We're having this conversation. I know that I'm. I just joined. I'm kind of excited right off the bat. But I think what Joey said is actually important. Where he said, "I expected you paid like thirty five bucks," and I'm glad we're talking about this because you have to be careful about what you're looking at on Amazon. Where if you see foam that looks like that and it's thirty five bucks, it's not what he has. It's not the same thing. So, you gotta be careful. Yeah. I'll, I'll drop a link to the Oralex uh, base traps here in the chat box. Um, anything else on this topic before we move on, or what do you guys think? Michael, what I, have you noticed in your home theater? The only thing that – all right, so I use two-inch. Um, they're basically – what are they? Probably two-foot by four-foot panels. And so when I added that, I used to think they were just, you know um, – uh, snake oil or whatever you want to call it, you know. Um, but as soon as I added them, I had a huge slap echo. And so it definitely got rid of the slap echo. The room still has some reverb, not much, but it has some reverb. Cause like Chana said, you don't want to cover your walls because then you've got like an anechoic chamber and that's not fun for home theater for sure. Um, but there, one thing I did do that was kind of interesting. So I had two base traps in the, so if you're looking at the screen, the rear left corner behind me. And so I had them stacked basically from floor to ceiling. There were two triangles, real thick. Um, and I decided I had them for years, probably at least, oh goodness, probably 10 years, you know, that I've had them since I've had my theater room. And I measured with them and then I took them out of the room, measured again, and it changed zero. I mean, nothing. <laughs> now they may have been, you know, because they, they were DIY, you know, base traps. So they may not have been good quality, thick, dense. I don't know. But I just know those made no difference in my room in that one corner. But that's all I had them in. So it was kind of interesting. So, but I, I guess the best thing to tell you is, of course, if you've got them, take some measurements before and yeah. then take some measurements after you install them and, and see what it does in your room. Also, so. I'll jump in here. You got to be careful about what type of measurements that you're expecting. If you're looking for a change in the frequency response, you might not actually find that at all. So you want to be looking really? at like spectral decay, waterfalls to see how long things are hanging out in the room. So I it's gotcha. don't do a frequency okay. response, see nothing, and then just return gotcha. everything thinking that <laughs> it didn't do squat because that's actually not true. that makes sense because you're wanting to slow down that decay or quicken that decay right exactly so yeah it doesn't yep Correct. linger yep. in the room and build yep. okay interesting yeah i wouldn't have thought of that oh well i got rid of them anyway <laughs> so now i at least have some space for some additional subwoofers back there which is cool well it's just yeah. interesting though because in home theater a lot of times like for example mike you have your the scholars behind your screen but inside yeah. of kind of like a cutout, right? It's like a cutout yeah. in your wall. Sure. So if you were to look at that, you'd say, okay, well, that might not be optimal because they're very close to the wall. They're inside of something, be, right. you know, things like that. But I think in home theater, it's kind of like you rely more on the uh, room correction to fix some of those issues. Yeah, for sure. Right? Anyway, interesting. Interesting. What else you guys got? So speaking of, oh, I mentioned subwoofers, so... What about my, here you go. So here's my question. So what would you rather have? One great subwoofer. That's interesting spelling lesser. on subwoofer. <laughs> nice, Jonna. Oh, or two yeah. or two lesser quality subs. So I get this question asked quite often, you know, should I, you know, get the, you know, this model that's a lot more expensive and it's a better subwoofer, or maybe slightly bigger, or should I get the two cheaper ones? Cause I can get better base response throughout the room. So there you here's, go. Here's what you guys think. Yeah, so I'll go first. Two lesser, two lesser quality subs all day long, without a doubt. And I would go as far as to say, I don't think I could live with a hi-fi system with just one sub at this point. Yeah. Once you hear what two subs can do, you're pretty much ruined at that at that point, in my opinion. <laughs> so, so I've got a slightly different opinion, mm. um, but with a caveat. So, if you can only afford, you know, a, everybody has a certain budget they're working sure. within. My recommendation is always buy the best subwoofer that you can. Sure. And then, okay, 
just save up down the road. It may be two years, three years, four years, whatever. Get a second one just like it because by that time, it's going to be a lot less than what it was retail, brand new. Um, so I'm all for the dual subs, but I just don't like getting two mediocre subs for the yeah. sake of smoother base response. You're not yeah, that's really a, smart. You're not going to yeah, get like, a don't, response. Don't get cheap ones, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of the thought there. Yeah. Shana, yeah. you go. I'll, I'll go last because I'm going to have to take off after this. I have a dinner to go to. All right, um, man. But you go. Save, you some, save some dessert for us, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I w- I'll answer this and then I'm going to take off. All right, cool. Um, I good. would go with uh, two. <laughs> I would go with dual. Um, actually, currently don't own any subwoofers right now. I know. It's it's weird, but I have like four or five here to review. And um, I would go with two. Um I, I, if you're talking about like one bigger one, like a PV16 Ultra or like two SB3000s, I would go with the two SB3000s. But those are quality yeah. subs, though. So I guess, and I, I guess that, there's there's a lot of caveats to that. Sure. It really depends on what those two subwoofers are. If you're talking about two Polk Audio subs versus a decent, you know, whatever SVS sub, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You hear that, Paul? <laughs> hey, Paul knows. Paul knows they don't. They don't make great subwoofers. Uh, they don't slap those subs. All right. So let me see the question again. Let me just make sure I'm answering it properly here. So the question is: one great subwoofer or two lesser quality? Okay. Subwoofers? Lesser quality. So lesser quality is uh, very, you know, up in Open the air because it's vague. It's vague. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. So Ron, you said number two. Uh, number two, right? Is the one you chose? Yeah. So I'm. I'm going to say, let me get one of those JTRs that Michael has. And, you know, I'll let you have those two um, $99 subs <laughs> that are on Amazon that go, they go like, a, they go strong down to 40. This is not fair. You know what I mean? This is not fair. We'll throw two of those. Hey. You know what I mean? It hey. looks like this. It looks like that. And then it drops off, you know, but <laughs> two of those. This is not fair. You know All right, I mean? get back to the but, club in there, Pitbull. Yeah, All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I'm saying, Sorry, though, right? Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like lesser quality. Yeah. You, you, All right. My, my thing is, make sure if if you're gonna get a sub, get try the to best make you sure can. it goes down to twenty. Yeah. You Don't know what I mean? There's out. some inexpensive ones that get very close to twenty hertz. Yeah. You can get one of those uh, for the price of another sub that can also go down to twenty hertz, but uh, more output or whatever. Get the two. They can get down to 20 hertz, but don't get the sub that goes like barely to 35 and expect to get two of those and hope that it does something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Another so thing I think all, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, that's fair. That's totally fair. And I'll say if, if do it yourself is an option, like those parts <laughs> express kits for subwoofers, sure. you might want to consider that because I can't think of an easier yeah. like starting project than a subwoofer. It's kind of hard to mess it up. So save some money and do it yourself. Ultimate DIY. All right, guys. Well, have, Later, man. have fun. Have a good rest of the show. Enjoy I'm your cruise, go ahead man. And, uh, get ready. Get all suited up for this dinner here. Nice. And I'll send some pictures to you guys. All right, Word. man. Take care, buddy. See you, buddy. Later, Joe. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Okay. Wow. That's a lot quieter in here now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever was going on over there oh, in dude. the nightclub was crazy. It was Party City, man. It was all the craps behind him, man. He was, they so, were, they were so swinging I, the dice. I've been super busy. So where is he? He's on a cruise. Where is he going? He's yeah, they're just... in they're in Catalina, Catalina Island, it's like oh, a little island wow. off the oh, coast small of boat LA. Cruise. Yeah, nice, very yeah. cool. Yeah. It's a nice little spot. I went kayaking there back in the day. Very cool. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's move on to uh, Ron's question here. What you got, man? If I gave you five hundred dollars to spend on any new speakers right now, what would they be? Yeah, yeah. be new. <laughs> That's a key. Five now, I, bucks. See, I, I, because people are gonna be you. like, "Well, I can buy used." Yeah. I was like, "No way, Michael." Yeah. Be like, "Oh, yeah. well, I'll just get the, I, uh, you know, the clip horns." You know, I know uh, maybe five or six. That of those. was two hundred. I could get a YMD. Bucks. You know, <laughs> that was two hundred bucks. Oh mercy! There you go. <laughs> the YMD, the Youth Man Deal, ladies and gentlemen. Right, so new speakers, bucks. new speakers. Yeah, five hundred bucks. What would you buy? I mean. I haven't heard them yet because I still haven't opened them, but I would probably be like the Elax, uh, the debut reference or the mm-hmm. Klipsch RP 600M. Mm-hmm. And one of those two. 
Okay, six hundred M. I think is five. I think you're there with the six hundred M, but I think those reference aren't those five ninety nine. I think they're six hundred. Oh, are, are they six hundred? Oh, I my think God. so. I think so. When when they originally um, released them, they were supposed to be five hundred. Oh and yeah, they did they're the five ninety nine. My bad. My yeah, bad. they did the old switcheroo, and they're mm -hmm. five ninety nine. <laughs> Oh right, because your one says four ninety nine on your video. Yeah, yeah, we lied to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's yeah. pretty rough. That's King pretty rough. misinformation. This is what it's you guys really need fun. to do. Like, you can't just. <laughs> 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 uh, this Good time guy. to let everybody know that I'm going uh, full time here pretty soon. So yeah, go ahead and unsubscribe. That <laughs> <laughs> that will not help. Not help the situation. Right. Uh -oh. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so those those are the okay. So then I would go with the, the Klipsch RP six hundred M. Okay. Um, yeah, for a pair of bookies, I think that's they'd work out for a lot of people, and yeah. in that price range for sure. Okay. Cool. Mike, what do you got? I think honestly, here's the thing: the hard part with me is most of like I've never really looked at at bookshelf speakers. Um, yeah. Typically, I look for bookshelves for you know of course, cheap ones for my girl's bedroom um, or surrounds or something like that. But I've never really looked at, okay, I need a pair of, you know, front speakers, um, you know, for my setup, especially for 500 bucks. Uh, the great thing is there's just some, you know, you guys have reviewed some on your channels, the Elax. Um, there's a lot of great budget friendly that still sound good. So it's yeah. not like you're wasting 500 bucks. It's just, you know, um, I don't well, know. Honestly, I mean, I'm just not familiar with that many bookshelf speakers. There's especially in that budget. Well, uh, well, it, it's just 500. So if you know any tower speakers that are five, 250 each, they're out there. <laughs> yeah. There's some, yeah. you know, there's that's some even folks harder. out there. Yeah, that's even harder. You know, yeah. because yeah. they're they're more expensive. So um, it's funny to me because, like, I know Joe said it a few times. Um, even though you have bookshelves. You're pretty much putting them on stands. Correct. So they're like the same it's footprint. the same amount of space that you're yep. taking up with a uh yeah. yeah with the tower. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Kind of interesting. And you're and you're gonna get less base response, you know. So um I'm a big fan of, you know, I mean, unless you just don't have the width and maybe you say you have an entertainment center and you need to put them like on the edges of your TV or something like that on that entertainment center. Um, I could see that, you know. And Floor standing speakers aren't for everybody. Polka S twenties are the sleepers. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Long, yeah. yeah. The S twenties are nice sounding speakers <laughs> for sure. My used Yamaha seven 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 S. Good thing you put new in the title. The yeah. Part of that question. <laughs> sure. Um. And then we have Deftac Golden Ear. I mean, the list goes on. XTZ Spirit Fours. Mm. Check those out. XTZ. Those. XTZ is an interesting company, man. They got some. Of course, I'm looking at those three 12 inch subwoofers that they've got. Oh, <laughs> that like stack, right? Yeah, they look pretty yeah. rad. Uh, let's see. Speakers. Go, go ahead and share your those. screen, Mike. Let's see if I can find it here. Is that it? No. Kind of helps if I put ZTZ <laughs> somehow. Is that the one X that makes um, the um, XTZ? Do they make THX speakers? Uh, let's see. Speakers. There we go. XTZ. So they're a European company. Go to XTZ Sound. There we go. All right. So let me copy this. Gotta figure out where you're. Share it. That's what I'm looking for. Was it? Share, there it is. Share the screen. There we go. Chrome tab. Here we go. All right. Cool. All right. Hmm. So yeah. they make they, they make a lot of THX certified speakers. What was the model on that, Chana? It was the Spirit Four. Spirit. So those white ones. Oh, here we are right here. Corner, yeah. Let's see what we're talking about. Spirit Four. So here we oh. go. Now that's four eighty European. Is that does that work out mathematically? Uh, it's a little over. A little <laughs> and we got fifty bucks shipping there too. So I don't know, man. I don't think it's. <laughs> but those are pretty five twenty according those to the current sweet, exchange rate. They, they look really clean. I've I've got a thing for white I'm, speakers. There's just something. Yeah. I love they this wave guide cool. here. Yeah. I think that yeah. looks really smooth. Yeah. The you know, I used to too. I used to hate white speakers, but for some reason, man, they just um, look great. They look classy. Like they do. And look at this woofer right here. Super clean. Ooh. Uh oh. Yeah. Ooh, carbon, carbon fiber. Nice. Yeah. There I we like go. Carbon. Mm, yummy. 
All right. Yeah. Great, yeah, great man. recommendation there. I like that, man. Yeah. Thanks. Whoever that, that was. Thank you. It was uh, J Ram Oldie. I don't nice, know. man. Appreciate right. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the XTZ, if you're if you're looking on their website, they've got those big old monster 312s that we looked at a couple weeks ago. Dwayne has a full setup XT. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Word. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mike, um, have you ever listened or tested a rhythmic sub? I have not. Um, a lot of guys have asked me about rhythmic. I just haven't reached out to them. Um, the reality is number what number one when you're reaching out to a company to review. Um, typically the hardest thing is just getting in, co in contact with the right person. Um, you know, you reach out to them on Facebook and sometimes they've got, you know, somebody that's, that really isn't that decision maker that could send you some for review. Um, bigger companies are harder to get in touch with. Like if you're trying to reach out to Onkyo, you pretty much have to have a distributor, you know, somebody that, uh, or that area rep, I guess yeah. that, you know, that you get in contact with, but I haven't, had a chance to uh, review anything from rhythmic heard great things from them um i think they're kind of a smaller company kind of yep. like the jtr kind of like the um power sound audio you know but make some great killer products now are those the ones that that are servo controlled yeah yeah the, plate, the other company the plate amplifiers that i have on my big boys they're yeah. they're offered through rhythmic yes very cool very nice. cool nice nice all right. No have you way. ever heard of OSD? So Damien asked a question. Hey, Youth Man, have you ever heard of OSD audio, uh, five channel power amplifier? I've seen um, those. People have been asking me to like get one. They're from Canada, I think. Hmm. Somebody yeah. just recently asked me or mentioned to me, oh, I know what it was. I had a guy over, um, him and his girlfriend just yesterday, and they were checking out my home theater and we were doing some demos and stuff. And he mentioned OSD for like surround speakers. So very, very inexpensive, super inexpensive. I and mean, we're talking yeah, like under a hundred bucks a pair kind of thing. Ohm audio amplifier. Here we go. You you pull it up there? Yeah. There we go. I got it. Oh. Yeah. OSD multi-channel amplifier. <clears throat> Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Eight channel, six, six zone. There's a, there's some home theater ones. Here we go. Five, okay. five channel high power home theater amplifier. The one he was talking about was the A5500. It's not that. That's like a kit. All right. Here we go. <coughs> 240 watts. All right. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Let's see. 200 watts per channel, four ohms, 150 <laughs> watts per channel into eight ohms. That's pretty good. Okay. I wonder what the. Uh, it's always interesting when they mention XLR and RCA, but they don't actually say balanced. It might just be just XLR connections, connector. not balanced. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think they're around like five hundred dollars or something like that for this. So I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, looks like it's a Class A champ. Okay. Yeah, Class H. Um, cool. But. Um, I think I think we need to find like some 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 more options. I think people yeah. need to be out there and making more five channel amplifiers because yeah, okay. the big some disparity. of them are pretty expensive, man. I mean, you know, and when you're looking at the pair sound, what was the A fifty two plus? Mm -hmm. I think is the one I inter uh, reviewed. Gosh, it was probably over a year ago. I mean, that's a it's an expensive amp. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, they're not super cheap, and of course, that's not even the high end. That's you know, the, they go um, way up from there. Yeah, I actually have an A fifty one on the way. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Yeah. Now, what is the A fifty one? Is that two channel or it's five channel? Okay. It is two hundred and fifty watts into eight ohms. Nice five channels driven, or okay. four hundred watts into four ohms. Cool five channels driven. So it's just yeah, it's madness. It's a, definitely a reference amplifier, but I think it's like five or six thousand dollars. So oh like, wow! Not, wow! Really, yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like a lot of people want more options i mean you've got some emotiva that's around the four to five hundred you got the outlaw sure. five thousand which is 650 yeah. then you get higher up on the emotiva line it's like a thousand for their xpa five channel you know it, there's just really aren't that many options so the osd is also in the like under a thousand dollar price range right it'd be cool to check out <laughs> um but yeah 
Yeah. I saw these uh I saw these cool mono blocks from Outlaw Audio that aren't too expensive. It's like a slim the mono block like, one. Does that yeah. kind of like the Marantz used to make? There's like a long rectangular no, one. No, no, it's like slimmer profile. It almost looks like a DVD okay. player. Like put okay, that so in there. Yeah. Like, so they're mm -hmm. wide and flat. Okay. Instead of long and square. 200 or something like that. I think okay. I can't remember. 200. The model 200. Is it yeah. 200 watt? Here, let me share a screen here. It's an interesting design because it's like a hybrid design with a, I think it's a class H or class D back end, but the mm -hmm. front end starts class A, B or something. It's like a hybrid. It's really interesting. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I don't remember. I was reading up on it. it looks, it looks cool. It looks cool and it's, it's pretty affordable. I know. know. Um, yeah. It will provide class A, B power up to 80 Watts. Yeah. Okay. Above 80 Watts will instantly shift into class G. Okay. Class G, yeah. Class G, yeah. So what is it? Is that like G funk? Is that like, like G money? G yep, Chana, that's it. It's G funk. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> class G, you're looking up Class G. So I, I don't know the price on this, but I know Chris, uh, that home theater dude, he actually got three of these for his front stage. Okay, I th think if I remember, bro, it was just a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't. It w maybe a few hundred bucks. Yeah, it's not really going anywhere here on the. Uh, let's go to shop, man. Shop <clears throat> model two hundred. Not it's not it's not showing here. Maybe they stopped making them. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I hope. Yeah, they're, I hate to say it, their website is absolutely horrendous. It, it, it is bad. It needs <laughs> it needs some help. They need youth man's help, man. I just need. <laughs> yes, they do. It's bad, right. man. I mean, literally, it's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, I send one your way. Here, I got Chana. sidetracked with that, but no, that's all good. All good. Oh wait, I did the wrong one. Hang on, Jonah. Oh, I found it. It's three ninety nine, brand new. Okay, so it's four hundred bucks. Four hundred dollars. So the front yeah. stage is just. Oh, look, Joe's back. Front stage is. Uh... What now? We got Jimmy Buffett going. <laughs> 1200 <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> oh, From, uh, what is going on? From Pitbull to Jimmy <laughs> Buffett, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> what I is up? Joe, I am back. <laughs> Take me to wow, your dealer. <laughs> what is going on, Joe? I've seen so many home grade unit one side of the xlr connector instead of the full reversal it's supposed to have via the dual hot feeds interesting yeah there it is if it doesn't say balance connector then it's probably just an xlr xlr connector. connection yeah and that's yeah that that's a pretty big deal if you don't know that yeah if you're like planning on doing long runs and installing it far away and you didn't know then mm -hmm. yeah here's your amplifier chana so if I shared that, did I share that? No. We're still on. Uh, Let me switch THX. to. Hang on a second. XTZ. T yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> Can we have so, a little bit All right, more? check check this one out. This is kind of interesting. Whoa, what is that black? Ooh. So they so they mentioned OSD. You know, they do speakers, but check out this amplifier. Go this to the back of that thing. Go to the back. Is that a double the, decker amplifier? This is a ridiculous amplifier. It weighs two hundred and thirty four pounds. <laughs> So that would take John. Uh, that would take Chana, Ron, <laughs> and Joe to lift this thing. Uh, but oh, come on now! <laughs> nice. So we got some balanced inputs, unbalanced. And the reason why I bring this up, I saw um, that. Uh, oh gosh, let me pull this up here. If there was an unboxing of that on Youth Men's channel, man, it would be X-rated. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! But look at that, three hundred and eighty watts. Yeah, 600 watts at four ohms. I mean, that is a beast of an amplifier. And so, if you guys are even interested in seeing what that, you know, can do, go check out Life of Bliss. Um, he's actually in the chat right now, so he's actually received one of these, and so he is oh, reviewing wow. that on his channel. Oh, cool! Yeah, so definitely take a look at that. He does. Kyle does a lot of uh, DIY stuff. So those of you that are into DIY. Um, definitely check out his stuff. He's just a cool guy, man. Got a great looking basement, a lot of cool um, DIY speakers. He actually built his own speakers. He's super handy, man. Like he built his own uh, bar area and just super dope space, man. So definitely go check him out. Life yeah. of Bliss. 
but that's a cool amplifier. Look, the handles on that's the left. Cool. It looks cool. <laughs> that was rad, dude. Yeah. It kind of looks funny like how like Chana, Chana, you need that for like your setup, dude, like yeah. on the road. On the road? Yeah, man. Like when you go to do your DJ and stuff. Oh, man. You, yeah. You, no. you can have 11 speakers rocking in that place. <laughs> <laughs> I only need two speakers and a sub. That's I it. just. I just love guys that, you know, we've been doing this for a little while here with the, the daily hi-fi show. Like anytime that we see a screen that's pulled up and there's something like totally badass to look at, all of us react the same way. We're just like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, oh, yeah Without yeah. fail, all of us are like, yeah, it's just, okay. It's just cool seeing stuff like that. It's like, man, these guys are like, that's legit, man. Double decker yeah. amplifier. That's, I mean, now what I don't know. For like our stereo rack, like if you have a closet to put it in, you know. You know what, Life of Bliss, um, post in the chat, what is the MSRP on that? I don't see it on their website. Just curious, because it looks like you've got to get it through a dealer, maybe. Well, you know what they say, Mike. If you got to ask. <laughs> Shit costs hey, too much, bro. Yeah, but I just want to know like, how much is Chana going to have to drop on that thing? Uh, yeah. wah, wah, wah. All, right. This, all, right, all right. All right. Let's move on to my question now. <clears throat> $11,000. $11,000? $11,000. Get the wow. freak out of here. $1,000 per channel. Ooh, that's but I found it through a dealer for five k. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Sounds like it, that sounds like it was stolen. For five. Hot. <laughs> hot. <laughs> It's hot and heavy. <laughs> hot and heavy. <laughs> oh wow! It did yeah. just get X-rated. All right. John. All right. So I get this question a lot. Uh, what what speakers can I use for Atmos? Because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of speaker manufacturers that make Atmos certified speakers, and you'll see an Atmos or a Dolby logo on speakers. I know the Klipsch have those. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, so you guys know, you can use any old speaker you want. If you're going to do a height channel, you can use a bookshelf. Um, the only problem is you got to watch out for weight and what you're mounting it with. So yeah. your mounting bracket has to be able to hold the speaker up, you know, and then if you if it has some sort of tilt or a swivel function, that's also good as well. So you can actually aim the speaker down to your uh, main listening position. However, um, you can use whichever ones you want. They don't have to be Dolby Atmos. Um, your standard ceiling speaker that yeah. like Polk Audio sells for like 60 bucks. You can do those yeah, for those. Had a guy that was going to mount um, floor standing speakers as his Atmos. Oh, who, Ron? I don't think it was Ron, but it was a dude on my channel. He's like, yeah, I'm going to mount a couple of them. I'm like, go for it, man. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with that, but my golly, if that thing drops on you, dude, you're dead. <laughs> you you certainly have just introduced a bad day. Oh, look at there, man. We got the fam. We got the Joey family. Look at there, dude. Yeah. Aww. Oh, hello, horrible little girls. Oh. Fam and tell. That's awesome. Fam, fam and tell. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Buffett and fam and tell. Yeah. Jimmy Buffett and fam. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, what's up, Joe? Joe, you oh, sound like a robot, dude. A robot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, you know that thing that you put in, in your mouth like, play the play the keyboard? That's what it's Oh, vocoder, like. vocoder. Yeah, it sounds like Joe's got a vocoder. It does. <laughs> <laughs> we should do an entire show just like this. I'm human. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> It totally sounds like the intro to um, Daft Punk's live concert. Totally. totally. Oh, I love this. Jim says Starscream. He sounds like Starscream from Transformers. There you go. I remember him. He had the little <laughs> tape in his chest. Oh, Soundwave. Yeah. Oh, that was Soundwave. Right. That was, sound yeah, Starscream right. was the plane. I yeah. really like that joke. Oh, man. Was cool. I had that little... Uh, what's he doing? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, yeah, Kraftwerk. Exactly. Kraftwerk. Mercy. I have air, eight Wharfdale diamonds mounted to my ceiling. Work perfect. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh, everybody's laughing. Oh, what's with Joe's wardrobe budget for this evening show? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> twenty bucks. Joe Hawking. <laughs> yes, Joe Hawking. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> completely can't understand a motherfucking I thing. Have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> oh god, this is great. Oh man. Uh, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, and we've lost Joe, Joe Hawking. That's mercy. <laughs> my goodness sakes! You guys want to hear a funny story? So my parents are buying a new house. They're moving out of their their house into a new house. <clears throat> they they currently have, and and this makes me crazy about my parents. So feel my pain here. When they got everything installed, they decided to do in ceiling, and I was like, don't. Don't do in ceiling. Like, are you out of your mind? And now that they're getting in a new house, they're like complaining to me as if it's my fault or something. Wow. <laughs> they're just like, oh, we're not, we're not going to do any of that home theater stuff because we've never liked this home theater in, in this house. And I was like, yeah, well, when you go to a concert, do they suspend the band from above and play down on you? Like, why would you put speakers up there? It makes no sense to me. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's funny, man. Well, I mean, if you, I don't know, I know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I used to have like summer tickets to the Hollywood bowl and their subwoofer line arrays are suspended. Sure. You know, yeah, with, with it's crazy. Well, with babies, I could, I could deal with that because you're dealing with sound pressure at that point. But if you're talking about everything, including their center channel is like <clears throat> up in there, the we're, we're in the, are they in Florida? <laughs> no, no, because <they're laughs> I right. heard they did that a lot in Florida. You know, like uh, they had all, I, even at the place I work at here at eighty fifty, right in front of like where the TV is. There's three speakers in the ceiling, and then Dude. there's two out by the couch. And I'm like, what kind of nonsense is this? Oh, it's awful. And every time I've gone over there, I'm like, guys, why don't you just get like a legit home theater? I mean, what? Just ditch this stuff. It's awful. You can't you can't hear anything in that room. It's just garbage. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like what was coming out of Joe's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I know sounds, that's like wow, wow. Now, now, it, now it's the side of the, <laughs> the cabin. Oh Whatever man, I, I hope he there. I hope he knows that camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he knows. Oh, he's, he's all looking. All right, all right. boom. Oh, there you go. It's a peep show. Get ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's got all, all of our channels are about to get banned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know channels. I don't care. Yeah, right. Uh oh, uh oh. He's flexing he's on dressing. This is okay. not good. Nice not good. This is a G rated show, yeah. Joe. It's like Every no, opportunity he has to show off perfect the guns. angle. Oh no, he's 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 getting dressed for something else. Ah, he's yeah. getting ready to go out. He's That's getting ready right. to go out. <laughs> <laughs> What's he gonna do? Just a live stream in his bedroom while he goes and <laughs> I have out, no out idea. Or what? He's, I have I mean, no idea. He's funny. Good thing he doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> this would get awkward really quick. Oh my goodness! All okay. right, uh, never know what's gonna happen on the Daily High Five Show, guys. Never know. That's why you got to be here every Monday, 4 p.m. <laughs> right. Pacific time. You got it. So we got a question here, and it's about a Denon or Marantz. And um, so this is the Marantz SR6014, which I think is the newest the newer one. one, right? Yeah, <clears throat> nine channel, but it can. Um, uh, process 11 channels has 11 channel outputs and then the other one is the denon x uh 3600h i think he meant x uh oh <laughs> <laughs> you gotta blow into it joe blow <laughs> joe blow oh mercy <laughs> what is he doing i don't know Ooh. i have no idea but uh he laughing he <laughs> having a good time world dude um he's just being silly yeah right. oh that, that makes up for it that makes up go. for it there you Jesus go sweetie. <laughs> um like where so you I, going? I, I guess to answer your question mark it depends on how much you want to spend because the x3600 <laughs> is 1100 bucks so you can save 400 dollars, or you could go with the marantz the one thing the marantz has that the denon does not have <laughs> is a seven channel input <clears throat> uh, where's the picture oh my god this is the 
smallest picture ever. I'm, I'm not going to show you a picture, but basically, <laughs> <laughs> look, she's just like her dad. <laughs> um, and another and thing, out of here. Another thing about the AVRs is, you know, there could be a big change coming soon with HDMI 2.1, and I know a lot of people are asking about that. Um, however, you got to think about sources. What 8K sources are coming out in 2020? There's only two, and they're both gaming consoles, and they're supposed to happen during the holidays. So if you wanted an HDMI 2.1 AVR, you would need a source that's like can support 8K or 4K at 120 frames per second, and or a TV that has HDMI 2.1. So far, that is only the 2019 LG line of TVs. So, you know, a lot of people are trying to figure out, should they spend more? Should they spend less? I always say spend less on your AVR because something might happen and you might want to upgrade in, in a year or two. And then you're kind of like out that money. So I would go with the Denon X3600H uh, Mark. Oh, he says he'll be getting the PS5. So maybe I'm about two of them. Maybe just wait. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just wait. Um, it would be great though if those gaming consoles did what the 4K players would do and have two HDMI outputs, mm -hmm. one for audio and video, one for just audio. Mm. So you could split it up, one go to a TV with HDMI 2.1 and then your audio just go to the AVR. Surprised they haven't thought of that. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you, do you think people should wait for HDMI 2.1 if they're thinking I'm, about buying a receiver? I'm the wrong guy to ask because I'm kind of a late adopter to a lot of things. I was probably the last guy on the planet to get a smartphone. And, you know, yeah. I, just kinda, I love technology, but I'm not like one of those that has to go out and buy the latest, greatest. So I'm okay using, you know, one year old, two year old, three year old, four year old technology. Um, you know, but I'm pretty content. So I get it. I get it. What about you, Ron? Are you kidding me? You're gonna you're like really <laughs> Ron me? is a home theater guru, baby. Oh, uh, you need you oh, need man. the latest HDMI. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Ron's googling. What is HDMI? And, and the diamond HDMI cables, too. Exactly. Right? I'm like, what is HDMI? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I no, no, no good price on that. Gotcha. Word. I trust you. Thank you. Uh, you. So did you put your speakers as high as possible? As high as possible. That's the trick. You got to get them up higher than that. You got to keep going. <laughs> they can't hear them anymore. I think I think it's good. I know we probably shouldn't mention any of it right now, but I, I think uh, this uh, trip in April is going to be awesome. Dude, oh, it's going to be so a lot of fun. Much yeah. fun, dude. Oh, look, yeah. look. Joe's ready for going out at night. <laughs> so where are, we, where are we going in April, Chana? We're going to uh, to the Audio Expo, North America. Got it, man. Otherwise known as Axpona. Axpona, guys. Ax. Axpona. We'll have all, we'll have all oh, four of the Daily Hi-Fi crew at Axpona. So if you guys are in that area or can make it out, we'd love to hang out with you and say hi. Say hi. Yeah. So definitely. definitely come up and say hi. All four, four right? All four of us. All, all four. Kidding. Me, Mike, Ron. Yep. And, I'm, the good, uh, I'm the good looking Joe. one. So I'm easy to spot out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be a blast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say something else, but I was, I was, stop. stop. Yeah, we don't we don't share what we just share offline. That's that's something totally different. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm 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 really excited. Expone yeah. is a cool. It's a cool gig. It's a cool show. It's a lot of fun. We're gonna have a blast. I'm excited to hear um, JTR set up. You know, because I've got yeah. the the um, RS twos subwoofers jeff's gonna have some sick sick setup uh i think he's gonna have like 12 subwoofer kind of thing i mean it's just it's insane or at least 12 18s mm -hmm. yeah um, he's gonna have full towers you know with i think the 15s like the rt 215s dual 15s in each one so yeah. really yeah. interested to hear that yeah, I want to hang out with you and check out that room because of yeah. all the stuff that I've seen you review, the JTR stuff, that's piqued my interest. It looks yeah. really interesting, really cool. So I, I want to check mm. out that room for sure. Well, JTR is going to have kind of like an after party cool. after the show. And so hopefully we can uh, 
Uh, I've been meaning to, to reach out to Jeff, and so we should be able to get you guys in. So it'd be good, man. Very cool. Yeah. It'll be fun. But yeah, I think we're going to have a blast, dude. It's going to be awesome. a blast. So yeah. just curious, in the chat, if you're coming to Axpona, let us know. Yeah, let us know. For Love sure. The, yeah, I just dropped in um, the link to Expona. Okay, cool. Very cool. So you guys can check out the dates. It's in April from the 17th to the 19th. Um, and uh, yeah, we will definitely be there. We got a lot of crazy plans. It's yeah. going to be, I mean, obviously we're going to be doing show coverage, but we're bringing some road, um, the uh, podcasting equipment with us. So um, we might even set up shop like in the lobby. And if you want to just jump on the podcast with us and hang out, we might do something like that. So we got a lot of cool ideas. And we've got some great, great guests that we're going to be inviting. So yep. stay tuned. Look yep. forward to that. That's going to be pretty sweet. I talked to one of them today. He said he's actually really excited. He was grateful to get the invite. So it should yep. be a whole Illinois, lot of fun. Schaumburg, Illinois at their convention center hotel over there, the Renaissance. But um, yeah, so that's going to come. That's coming up. We're still yeah. trying to finalize um, exactly what we're going to be doing there. But uh, it's definitely going to be a fun time. I think yeah, so. Gem tickets are definitely pretty cheap. I think what are they like 40 bucks or so? I don't think they're a lot. Single not tonight, Playboys. Oh, oh. Joe's Joe's got its tie on. Look at this guy. I know. Uh -oh. Hey, um, Chana, I know that when you host, it's easy to get lost uh, or lose track of time. We're getting close to six. I know that you said you had something coming up. It's five. Or yeah. five. Five, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I I um yeah, I do have we have the uh the Jameson um bartenders ball here in mammoth lakes there you go Celebrating the best bartenders in mammoth lakes with a whole bunch of jameson and awesome <laughs> um it's Looks uh like it's an event put on by southern wines and spirits and one of my uh, good friends from college is uh high up over there so she's like do you want an rsvp i was like sure she's like it just goes to me so just tell me how many people you want and i'll put you on the list so um perks right perks it's all about perks um who do we have here in the chat? Um, Looks like Coat's going to be at Axpona. Yeah, I see that. Only got married last Thursday. Who got married last Thursday? Dwayne? Or, or are you saying me? I don't know. Where's that at? It's uh, Dwayne. 4.56 p.m. I don't know if that's me. I don't know. I don't know if there's a joke there. Chana drinks Jameson and ginger. <laughs> I don't know, but there, um, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, special specialty cocktails, and of course, um, you know, food and drinks. But yeah, thank you, Ron. Thank yeah, you, Ron. Absolutely. Um, uh, another question. So here's another thing. Um, HDR ten plus and hdr uh dynamic hdr uh formats i mean it's not really format whatever um some people say but it's like dolby vision it's dynamic meaning the metadata changes per scene um the problem with hdr 10 just like with dolby vision is that all your devices are not going to off the bat have to hdr 10 plus support so on a receiver they're gonna have to have i talked to the denon um and Morant's engineers one of the engineers when i was at the show in new orleans last year in may and basically what he says is we have to have a brand new um, hdmi board to uh support hdr 10 plus so that just means that it's going to be a new product so again guys i would say like i know i know these guys would say it too put more money into your speakers because that yeah. um AVR or processor or whatever is just going to be obsolete in like three years. What's so funny, Mike? <laughs> I'm looking at Tristan's comment. Oh, okay. Sure. I'm a little late. Literally have 2% battery now and must prep for work today. <laughs> have a great show. Thanks, Dwayne, for showing up. Have a good one, man. Oh, oh okay, okay. So Dwayne was saying, I said I'm going to divorce my UB9000 after you mentioned dual HDMI for consoles. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, like, you know, technology is moving faster. And the only thing we can do is kind of just uh, make a stand and say, hey, I'm buying this now. And I'm not going to think about HDMI 2.1. I'm not going to think about HDR10+. I'll think about it in five years when 
yeah. stuff is shaken out. You know, I think there's yeah. a, like a, I, <laughs> look at Joe. <laughs> yeah, that smirk on him, man. Good job, Joe. Yeah, you look styling, bro. Styling. Handsome devil over there. He looks good, man. Well, I mean, I think you're right, Chana. It's like, and let's be honest, like no matter what you buy, you're you're always gonna be behind. You're no matter what, no matter what you decide to get, if you decide to upgrade to that latest HDMI, something else in your system is gonna be behind some you know. It's just you can't you like you said, you have to commit at some point and just say, This is what we're gonna do and this is the plan, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's that that's what I noticed is the best way to go about it so that because if you're like constantly chasing the rabbit never, yeah you know that you know never catch it man you're, you're not no you're not you're not yeah. just like joe needs to get a haircut you know, wha are you waxing your eyebrows dude he's waxing his eyebrows ladies and gentlemen here it goes here it goes <laughs> <laughs> there you go oh mercy what a mess man what a mess yeah yeah um we have any other uh questions coming in? I don't know about questions. Uh well we finished our questions. Yeah. What do you think about um IMAX enhanced? I still am not like excited about it. I mean, like I don't okay. So just, hold on. What is IMAX enhanced? Let's start with that. What is it? I may know the most about it. Um, he had a conversation with who was that? Phil, Phil Jones. Yeah. Phil Jones from um Sound United, probably one of the best um, persons to explain IMAX enhanced. Uh, did a video with him at CES, and basically, Ron, what it is, if you get a 4K disc with Atmos, okay, yes. um, that is mixed near field so that it can be played on a bunch of different systems, i.e. TV speakers, sound yes. bars, yes. small home theater in a boxes. Yep. IMAX enhanced gives you the theatrical mix of the movie mm. so we're 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 not putting any reins on the dynamics at all right it's just the full bore this is it this is what they have in the theater playing so it would mean to me that you would have to have a pretty kick-ass home theater. you gotta have a big boy home theater yeah yeah to yeah. to to run that at the optimal level. Now, what I noticed and what it's Joe noticed up traction is, though. What's that? I just wonder if it's going to pick up traction. I, it just like much is happening with it. They need to release those movies. Uh, the what is it? The IMAX demo that's laying around here. Um, Bumblebee. That would be cool to see. Yeah. Um, but they haven't. They've had all these demos, and they give you this demo disc, or you know, they have a demo disc with like a ninety-second demo. Yeah, lame like that. Um, but we haven't seen a full movie except for two, I'd say nature ish kind of shows. Mm -hmm. Um, Journey to the South Pacific and Beautiful Planet or Blue Planet. No, right. Beautiful Planet. Um, they're both IMAX movies, mm -hmm. and the audio in the Beautiful Planet one, Beautiful Planet. Yeah, Beautiful Planet. I thought it was just going to be a nature show. It's actually looking at the earth from space so there's got you know when the spaceship takes off and they're showing like thunderstorms you know there's a lot of crazy base going on and it sounds really good the only problem is um you know there there aren't that much movies joe says i love the imax enhanced demo blu-ray it's actually really <laughs> again yeah, like, i got like a pre-release and I, honestly i wasn't excited about it i mean uh, it's a weird disc from the perspective of the video aspect, I don't really care for the video aspect right. of IMAX Enhanced. I think I think where IMAX Enhanced lies in like the, is the audio, having that full on mix. Yeah, that's like you know pure and unadulterated. I think that's where it's at. Um, but again, everybody likes that IMAX format so that you don't have the black bars. And they just need to get a real screen. Is you all get, it is. You're getting, I'm getting real cinematic here. If they get yeah. a real screen, you don't have to worry about that, man. <clears throat> Got to get yeah. that scope screen. Oh, I found out today. Um, a guy on my channel mentioned, he said, actually, scope is not 2.35 to 1, and it's not 2.4. You know, it was like, I forget the number. 
but it the original scope was i guess limited to a certain format and it's not 2.35 but my point was everybody refers to it as scope you're not going to change it you know whether it's truthful or not um to say that you know anything not or anything wider than 16 by 9 is not really scope you know mm -hmm. good luck kind of beating that drum but just may not happen unfortunately so Joe's rocking the 16.9. That's all good. Nothing wrong with 16.9. I just wanted something that was what you would expect when you go to a movie theater, but better. You know? Yeah. So I like that wide cinescope. Yeah. So why were we talking about IMAX Enhanced? I, I kind of forgot. I was just curious. Like, you know, oh. we were talking about, oh, you, you had made a comment about uh, like fizzling out and, you know, or shaking out is what you were saying. Mm. So I was just wondering, like, what were your thoughts on right. how will IMAX enhance shake out? Is it is it going to be one of those that, you know, well, that, I mean, it's, and then it's the fourth immersive audio format, mm -hmm. right? We've got Oro 3D yep. started it all off. Then um, DTSX. Yeah. Atmos and DTSX mm -hmm. and then IMAX enhanced. Now, I don't know if IMAX enhanced is more of a marketing move. Mm -hmm. because you see you see in here dolby atmos everywhere everywhere like yeah. it's on it's on everything dolby atmos it's got this disney plus has dolby atmos streaming so where's dts in all this mix now mm -hmm. if i imax enhance is based off of dolby or sorry mm -hmm. based off of dts x so maybe that's kind of trying to revive that and save yes his way to kind of get back into yeah. the forefront of people's minds talking about imax enhanced but uh, just, I just still don't see a lot of marketing even on that. So I don't know. It'll be, I mean, we were, of course, only guessing, you know, time will yeah. tell. So cool. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, the ship is on the move. <laughs> is it dinner time, Joe? Five o'clock? Nice. Got to go eat. Dinner with the captain? <laughs> dinner with the captain. No, dude, I'm serious, man. There's always like a captain's dinner. I went on cruise. Oh, six o'clock. It depends on yeah. Depends on the cruise, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh and again, like there's only a few AVR manufacturers that have all four audio formats, and that's Den and Morantz mm -hmm. and Audio Control. Or those are the three that I know. And audio control is not like a I mean, it's it's a very well known brand, but you know it's so what are the four so there's imax uh-huh dts dolby and oro yeah DTS oro x oro 3d, 3D. Oro it's kind 3D. of a european version so okay. pretty much those discs you have to order like on ebay and get them from overseas yeah so. i've done that and i've literally spent 40 to 50 dollars on a blu-ray yeah <laughs> just to hear it yeah um <clears throat> but i actually like it better than atmos Okay. Uh, so I think it sounds better. Now, what's the funny thing is like I was complaining about in the last podcast that Atmos um, mixes are all different. Bumblebee, the first scene, all this action going on. I unplugged all my speakers. What's coming out through Atmos? Just the score. So none of the effects. There's planes flying over you and stuff, but they just didn't yeah, do yeah. any of that um, in Atmos. But if I use the Oro 3D up mixer, I'm getting effects coming from above. Oh wow! Right. So um, in that aspect, like, like it's it's pretty cool. And and there was like this little situation that was happening last year where Dolby wanted to block uh, the Oro up mixer right. on all AVRs coming out in 2019. So there was a big old like controversy about that. Hmm. Yeah, because a lot of people were taking just a regular Atmos track and just tossing it in and up mixing it to Oro. So, and Dolby didn't like it. No, no, Dolby did not. Dolby did not. Uh, but yeah, you know, we just need more, uh, you know, more, more content. And, and like, I have a few movies, Ron and Oro. And so Oro adds the voice of God channel, which is right above you. Mm -hmm. And what? yeah. So it's like kind of like a center channel for your ceiling in a way. Yeah. It's in a way. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So That's trippy. I have yeah. five speakers on the ceiling, right? The two front the two over the surrounds and then one in the center. And that that's crazy. Like it, it yeah. literally is 
like they put stuff up there and it really ties everything in together. Um, I can almost imagine it like things that are just overhead moving from exactly. speaker to speaker. It's like a seamless transition, I would imagine. So yeah. think about when I watch, um, there's a movie called Gravity and Gravity is an outer space and Sandra Bullock is kind of flipping around. And as she's spinning in a circle like this, going away from the ship, she basically breaks off, detaches from the ship because there's this big, um, kind of like a meteor shower in a way with a bunch of parts and stuff flying through. And so as she's spinning, you hear, you know, it, the, it'll actually come from like your top front Atmos and then it'll go to your front left speaker yeah, to your back, you know, rear. And so it's a, literally a three dimensional immersive sound. That's gotta be nuts. Is, it's pretty awesome, dude. Seriously. Atmos. Um, I thought originally when Atmos came out, it was going to be just, Kind of like a marketing deal. Yeah, just flop. Yeah. It, it's a real deal. It's yeah. really, really cool. Now, you don't always hear those channels like active, like Chan is saying. And, and the reality is not every disc is a good mix of Atmos. You know, certain engineers do a better job with it. And there are times where you should hear some Atmos, you know, channels active and they're not in that particular movie during that scene and that's a shame because there's so much that could have been done in that scene it's like man that would have been a great opportunity to take advantage of those at most channels but you know didn't so yes yeah, so you can see the three layers here so you got that ear level yeah you go up higher than that you've got um you know that height channels then they recommend so they're wanting to kind of create what they call a bubble so yeah. like in my setup um i even shared in my last video my setup's not ideal for Atmos. Um, I enjoy it. I love it. It sounds great. But ideally, you want your side surrounds and your rear surrounds about ear level. Yeah. And mine are actually two or three feet above ear level because 10 years ago when I built my theater room or 12 or however long it that's, was. That's what you do. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Two to three feet above ear level because we didn't have Atmos. We wanted it to be, <laughs> you know, kind of this enveloping sound. And so that's yeah. how we were doing it at that time. Yeah. Um, so you, you called techno dad for advice as well. That's, that's why you ended up with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Speakers up really high. You got it, man. All the way to the top, top overhead layer. So Ron's a fan now, now that yeah. the speakers are up in the air and you can mount them to the ceiling, get them way up. He's like, I'm all in. Ron, <laughs> Ron gets on a step ladder and just sits up there on the top. <laughs> He's like, man, this sounds so good up here. Remember the ceiling? <laughs> I like it. I can't hear any babies crying. It's just amazing up here. How is how is base up near the ceiling? I've I've never been up there. Does it sound base? good? There? Yeah, your yeah. base. Oh yeah, it sounds great up there, man. Yeah, base okay. rises. Okay, I got yeah. it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Did Chana? Did we oh, lose Chana. My wife does not want me to listen to you guys. She says it's going to cost a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> let's see where was it <laughs> boom tell her we highly recommend taking your wife out to a nice dinner <laughs> uh, yeah yeah there we go what is hey, what is this other question let, let me jump in here since we yeah. got since we got jimmy buffett back here um so Joey, my question, I want to know, and I already know your answer. I swear you, you better answer this correctly. $500 to spend on any speakers, pair of speakers new. What are you buying? 500 bucks brand new. What do you get? How would you spend them dollar bills, man? Dun, dun, if you don't say UB5, I swear to you. Oh man, he's ha he's got a cliffhanger. Or 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 UB five or okay, UB five is new for two hundred bucks. Damn, was it with a coupon like Chana? Damn, I get coupons. I yeah, I can see that, Joe. Yeah, I could see that. No jet room one top end clarity and extension RP six hundred M's. I'm buying Bose cubes. Nah. Hey, <laughs> let let's 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 dive into that. What do we think of Bose? Do you guys care? Like, oh snap! 
let's do it. I, I don't have any problem with bows. I'm going to be honest with you. I have zero problem with bows at all. None. They're cute. Now, all right. So typically, <laughs> typically the people, I mean, really, that, that's the only positive uh, that I see out of. Now, when I think of bows. Dude, the, is the, that fair though? They make, they make a lot. They've made a lot of speakers. It's not just the cubes. Know, but that's what they're known for because yeah, they're known for that. Wives and girlfriends, significant others, they're like, man, you're not putting those big bulky speakers. My wife, when we first got married, said, hey, what about them little cute little speakers? And you're like, I'm youth, man. Get out of here with that. I'm like, I don't want that junk in my house. <laughs> you know what would be hilarious is if you actually bought, get a youth man deal of sure. Bose cubes. It'd probably be like $5 for you. Blow them up. No, set up your entire rig with just bows and then go from what you normally listen to. to just <laughs> that would be bows. awesome. That would be great, dude. You like, know what? Dude, you... it would sitting in my theater seats, that would literally put me to sleep. It would, <laughs> dude, like it, it would sound so good. You just be, fall right asleep. In no pace. I mean, I could just cuddle up in my little chair. Oh man. No, 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 no. Keep the keep the JTRs plugged in. Just oh, all your other speakers. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I would love to see. I would love to see an actual reaction of like you lit. <laughs> okay, so all right, so let's go down that road though. <laughs> with that system, with what they call the Bose Acoustamass, yeah, you've got everything's kind of pre-wired into that base module. Yes, you know? and so it's it's a lot harder to stretch those. You definitely oh right. Uh, you just got those weird, you know. It's just an interesting setup because everything has to. It's a passive. Yep. A subwoofer. It's a passive yep. cabinet with a little yep. six and a half inch driver. And then so, you know, sound comes into that. And then with the crossover sends the mid frequencies and the high frequencies out to those cubes. And the cubes don't have a tweeter. So that's kind of weird for me too, to have a speaker that only has a mid range and it's only what, two and a half inches, you know? So it's just not too exciting to me. So... <laughs> you lost all credibility, my brother. Look at there. Oh. K six or six are just easy slammed. come, easy go. That's right, man. <laughs> yeah. So I think Bose. All right. So their headphones. You know the noise canceling. You know they. Say those are revolutionary. Great. Yeah, you know? they said those are great. They did a great job with that. I think Bose can sound good, but in reality, I mean, size does matter when it comes to speakers. You're not going That's to what she said. You're not going to get this crazy, amazing theater like experience with these little dinky cubes. You know, you just can't do it. It'd be a fun experiment. All right. So yeah. maybe I'll try to find a don't, pair. Don't 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 blow them out with those big amplifiers you got though. You might have to That's the thing. You can't even hook an amplifier. Well, oh, like, that's right. You have to go it, through the it, situation. It's and it's a weird setup, but you know, they just did a really stinking great job especially back in the nineties right. marketing, you know, yes. used to work at circuit city. We had bows and we had a lot of people come in there and we would blow the crap out of those speakers. They, mm -hmm. you know, if you try to crank them, they can't handle, you know, loud volumes. They really can't. Um, I, I've, heard, I've heard that the bows 901s can get ridiculously loud, like party loud. I've yeah. heard that. Yeah. And they, so. they're kind of known for that series. So that isn't that the one that they had speakers? It was their the flagship. Well. It was their flagship model. Yeah, I think they had speakers in the back as well as yep. the front. They had the two ports in the front. A, one, uh, one port, I think, in the front. Maybe. The mm, I don't know. Bose Good question. Nine. Yeah. So Joe had a question here. You got Joe. And it has to do with bows in the PA space. Now this is interesting because I actually used the L ones. Uh, for quite some time at my karaoke night, um, these guys right here. Yeah. So two of these. Uh, what is this stupid oh, ad? Get out yeah. of here. Ours. I've I've heard those a number of times in live venues, and I don't mind them. It's they sound too, fine. Yeah. Yeah, they sound good. The punch is there. Usually, it'd be two of these. So like the you see the integrated sub at the bottom. Yeah. So you get two of those. Um, and it's Not it's bad. pretty clear. So yeah. I use that for quite some time. Until the place I was working at um, redid their sound system. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very easy. Just plug a quarter inch cable in there straight from my mixer. Good to go. Yeah, yeah. We, did a, we did a like a 5K race at the local high school. 
And one of the youth pastors brought a system out just like that. And yeah. so I plugged in my phone to it and it, like I said, it sounded pretty decent, you know, but when you're trying to, you know, really crank it, they, they don't do so hot. So you just is it weird like, that I want to try those, those Bose towers is two channel. I want to try those. I want to see what that would sound like. <laughs> this, this thing right here. Yeah. Not, yeah. Oh, it would sound good. Yeah. I would do that. I would rock that. Have fun. I mean, if they're they're used for um live PA situations, you know, that's it's exactly what it's used for, two channel situation. Yeah. Uh good question, Ron. Good question. Way to stir the pot, brother. Yeah. It was Joe's yeah. question. I looked at the uh the Bose 901. So you were right, Ron. There's a single port. Yeah. Um, there's eight mid-range drivers in the front. Again, no tweeters. Love that. No, no, no. There are two ports. A port on the right, port on the left. Oh, okay. Okay. Me, um, hang on a second. I will share my screen. Let's look at these. Maybe back. there's one speaker in the front. Is that what it is? There's one. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've looked at them. Take a look at that. I've always wanted to hear them, though. Did you get that one, Chana? Oh, just shared it. There you go. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that thing. So you got a little. Let's see. Can we make that? There we go. So, so that's. that's a Those port. ports are in the back, though. Those are in the back. This is the rear of that's it? That's the back of the speaker, bro. That's Whoa. the front of the speaker. What? Dude, Wait. that's the same thing. There's the ports. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's what are you that talking that about, port. Rod? <laughs> is that like a blow port in the middle? I mean, what do you do there? Is that air conditioning? Pull up. Pull up Bose's. Why are we on? Pull up. That's like an old hey, granny version of the Bose 901. Dude, yeah, no. Go dude, back to that dude, one with the speaker grill. All right, so right here, go back to the one with this. Go back right to the there. right there. That's the front of the speaker, guys. Okay, because it's oh, really okay. okay. And that's yeah, the back. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, so that's the rear ports. Yeah. I don't know what that is. What is that thing in the middle? That's. Uh, I think you blow into that <laughs> for bass. Like a blowhole. A blowhole. Oh man. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder. I see what's in the front though. That's weird. Let's see. I'm not gonna lie. I really genuinely want to hear Bose 901s. I wanna, I wanna experience because they were a legacy speaker. Like they did a lot of people bought those and loved them, and I want to hear mm -hmm. what they did. Oh, that's the same thing. I'm still trying to find the front. Oh wait, right here. There you go. You'll need the EQ with the 901. I found, oh, that's a video. Sorry about that, guys. We're not watching a video. Yeah, and that is one thing that's lame about it is that you have to have a preamp or integrated amplifier with tape outs to run the EQ for the uh, speakers. That's one stipulation. Otherwise, they sound awful. Here so there's like a special EQ circuit that's making them do what they do. There it is right there. Is that what you're talking about? Y yes. Yep. One speaker in the front, yeah, so, and two ports. Is that and what that is? The, eight drivers in the back? Weird. Yes. Right. And again, no tweeters though. What no is tweeters. no tweeters? No tweeters. And that there's no bass. There's no tweeters. Just mid range. I want to hear them. All right. I like those awesome. tulip stands too. I like that like mid century look. I like everything about those speakers. I don't care. I don't care. Throw up my unsubscribe from New Record Day Banner. I'll I'll deal with it. <laughs> That was good earlier. Oh, uh oh, we, there you go. There it is. There Ron you go. likes bows. Did you guys hear? He likes bows. <laughs> <laughs> Immediate <Yeah>. unsubscribe. <laughs> Check that out. So it looks like they've got their own proprietary, what, maybe an amplifier? That's the EQ. Yeah. The so EQ. that's what runs oh, through the tape, okay. the tape out into that guy. And it's an, more hocus a circuit pocus. that more hocus pocus, man. So there's the front. More hocus <laughs> pocus. <laughs> it's not hocus pocus. It's an EQ. Uh, oh, that's too yeah. much. But that's the thing, though. You can't run this through a regular no amplifier and make it sound good. That's what I'm no. saying. Hocus pocus. <laughs> <laughs> that's some wild stuff, there, dude. Remember, regular guy audio says you can EQ anything to be acceptable. Not Bose. Oh, did I say that out loud? Not Bose. Oh, you you can't EQ Joe's voice from earlier and make it sound acceptable. I can tell you that. No, no <laughs> EQ in the world is gonna fix that. He did not. <laughs> there he did not go there <laughs> that was some <laughs> he did he did that was some uh mr roboto there 
<laughs> when you don't cuss, you have to be more creative. Hocus, hocus pocus. Hocus, 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 hocus. <laughs> That's a good word, dude. That's a good yeah. word. Hocus pocus. That's some. See, I don't even use the poke language, man. Their their favorite thing is BS, and I don't even do that. Oh man, you guys are funny. Yeah. Got All love right. It. Are we closing up shop? Yeah, probably. I think it's close up shop. Degrade into something. Uh, something bad. Hey, we kept it G. I thought Joe was. Well, look, look, Joe's definitely that. keeping it G. I mean, yeah, I thought he was. Look gonna... at that style. <laughs> That's the face of daily hi fi right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me see the eyebrows again. <laughs> Next to eyebrow. Oh, we hear in the voice. Hot. <laughs> it's still all messed up. <laughs> oh, there's the eyebrows. Look at there. <laughs> so, so can't hear it. Hot. Still can't hear anything. You know your well, sound wave GQ. There it is. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So just to let you guys know, we did not open up the um the phone line tonight because Joe is usually man's that station. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's he's got that set up on his end, so weren't able to utilize that tonight. So hopefully next week we'll get that back in play. You guys yeah. call in with your questions and just chat with us. Love to hear from you. Yep. Thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out. Um, yeah. We've got as always old Joe in the background. Let me we've see got Ron's as, little one. As, as we get ready to depart, let's see your best moves, Joe. We want to see you. Let me, let's see it, Pitbull. Let's baby. see your moves. Cut it Shake it. Let me see it. Shake Come that on. money maker. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. We money. couldn't handle it. No, we couldn't handle it. No, so people. thank you guys so much for coming um, and hanging out in the chat. Uh, again, my name's Chana. We have Mike, the youth man, so Ron from New Record Day, and Joe from a channel called Scratch and Smell. Oh, Scratch and Smell. <laughs> uh, he's uh, going to have a good night. Thank What's you guys so much for coming out. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week. Later, as guys. As usual, 4 Take p.m. Care, everyone. PST, Mondays, the Daily Hi-Fi Show. Bye. Peace. Have a good one.